Sylvia and me. 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 Hi, I'm Sylvia Beckerman, host of the podcast series Sylvia and Me. Conversations with extraordinary, inspiring women. Hi. My name is Debbie Gravitt, otherwise known as Debbie Shapiro, Debbie Shapiro Gravitt, but I'm Debbie Gravitt. I have three beautiful children. I've been in eight Broadway shows. I have one Tony Award, one Grammy Award certificate, whatever that means, <laughs> an Emmy nomination. I had a bunch of chickens, two dogs, a cat, one husband. I have a production company called Group 5 Productions, and a Tony Award. Hi, I'm Debbie Graben, and welcome to Sylvia and Me. Debbie, <laughs> thank you so much. Well, actually, I was going to introduce you almost the same way you did. Uh, <laughs> your list of uh, accolades and awards and everything is absolutely, it's huge what you've done, and you've been called one of Broadway's biggest personalities. <laughs> so... That's me. That's you. And, uh, you know, we're talking in the middle of this pandemic, um, which we'll go into and see how exactly, you know, things have changed. Uh, you know, we, uh, what I've always said I'm is- happy we, I have noticed it all. <laughs> there all. you go. I understand you're also learning to juggle. Uh, well, that was a really high thing on my list. And I basically, I think I've gone backwards. <laughs> now can not even juggle one ball but you know i'm trying to juggle you know 90 meals a week so i think that that's a bigger a bigger issue right now i would think so Boy, um that, such, that is so you know what that is so uh, emblematic of this whole thing is like we're all we are basically all trying to learn to juggle aren't we sylvia yes we are debbie um <laughs> and, and learning how to juggle things that we never even thought of right. uh you know the children the you know and you have grown children and they're they're with you i mean my two boys are not with me um i do miss them but they're not living with me right. but you have three grown girls who are living with you. Which I have is two sons and a, and a daughter. Okay. There I have two go. sons. And so the juggling, uh, you know, the juggling act is, is something um, that is just mind boggling. I, I don't, I don't even know how else to say it. You know, some good is coming out of this, but we also are trying to figure out where we are. One of the things that I want to talk to you about is your production company, uh, Group 5 Productions. It's yes. an all-female uh, production company, yes. and um, your staff has experienced both sides of the aisle, so they are able to support all areas of production. So tell me, how did it start, and um, what are some of the things that you're doing? Well, it really started because, um, you know, obviously I'm a singer and a performer and uh, I work with, uh, I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of concerts. It's, I mostly do concerts these days. And I do a lot of concerts with orchestras, symphony orchestras throughout the world, actually, which is sort of an amazing thing. And why I think I'm a little antsy right now, I'm used to traveling so much, but that's going off topic. Anyway, the man who uh, books me for these concerts, uh, one day we were speaking and I have a show I do called Big Band Broadway, which is I have an album called Big Band Broadway and I've done it with some symphonies and he said, and he suggested, why don't you start booking it yourself? And that led me to go, you know what? I, I, there's a girl I've worked with, Lakeisha Jones, fantastic talent from American Idol. We were singing in Moscow and she told me this dream she had of doing a Whitney Houston show. And I went, I'll help you book that. And anyway, so a year ago, it's only, it's not even a year and a half that we've been in business. I started it a year ago, January, and I brought in my daughter, uh, who's a filmmaker and a brilliant director. And then she had a friend who's this 
brilliant, brilliant um, graphic designer named Stephanie Ortz. And uh, we, we started it and I just decided, you know, if I build it, they will come. And I literally went to this first, there's a big conference called APAP, which is the Association of Performing Arts Presenters, where people from all over the world come to New York, which is great because I'm based in New York, so I didn't have to get a hotel room. <laughs> and um, you come and you sort of show your wares and you meet people and you network and you cross your fingers. and. Our very first time we did it, which was a year ago, January, we did quite a bit of business. And I have to say with incredible hubris <laughs> um, that you know a lot of it was because people who knew me, including one of our big shows now is a show called A Toast to Stephen Eady. And I literally, the guy who runs a performing arts center in Palm Desert, I said, hey, what do you think of this idea? And then we built the show from that. So it's been really fun to sort of do it little on the fly. And, and now I feel like we are sort of running. I feel like we, had, we did our second um, convention and people knew us a little bit and they're understanding what we're trying to do. I, I really, I'm just talking. Wow, you haven't even said anything. Should I just keep going? I guess I can keep going. Well, um, I'm almost finished. No, um, what, go ahead, finish up. No, but I, what I've realized is that what's really great about it is not only working with these beautiful women, but also that I just work with people that I know and love. And I've, that's the people I've called and said, hey, wanna do a show? Do you have a show? Et cetera, et cetera. So I found it much easier to book other people than myself in a way. So it's, it's been really great. It's been a very good thing. Okay. And it's an all female production company. Did you purposely do that? Um, or did you, did it just happen that way? Because the two other women that you're, uh, that you're working with just happened to be people that you've you believe in and were able to work with? Um, you know what? I never, I never started out that way because I, I feel, I, I never wanted to like go, yes, only women in the company. It's just, it ended up that way. And now it does feel like something. In fact, somebody called me from a theater in Maine because she was so intrigued that it was all women in the company. And so I went, hmm, that's certainly <laughs> resonating with people. And it is a fascinating, I've never been on this side of things, on the business end of it. And to watch, and I've been around for a little bit of time, a long time, and it is fascinating to see that how male centric things can be at times. That it's still, after all this time, af after all the work that we've done, that it's still, we're still have to, you know, run two steps to, to the male's one. It is interesting. Definitely. And, and that's the thing because of technology, because of, you know, where we were some time ago, we think we've come so far. But when you get down to the nitty gritty, it's not as far as we think. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that um, you really, it, it would have been a struggle to be in business. You needed a male partner to co-sign anything because you weren't allowed to do it on your own. And we're not talking that long ago. I mean, yeah. you know, the 70s and 80s really isn't that long ago. I know. Um, so, great. you know, it's one thing uh, to, you know, be a performer and um, not being able to get, you know, roles as you get older. Uh, but it's another thing to do it from the business end and see, again, what other people are up against and what as being a female you're up against. Mm -hmm. And it's so true yeah. that you have to be two to their one. Yeah, um, at times. I mean, 
I think it's, you know, I, I don't feel any definitive thing about it, but I, I'm so aware of it. That's it. I'm aware of it. Um, but it doesn't stop me from plowing through. And well, I mean, evidently not. Look at everything <laughs> you've done. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, it's just, it's been an, it's, it's been an incredibly interesting learning curve. I actually, I brought another woman into the company and I was like, um, this wonderful woman who's, who's basically a stage manager. And, you know, I've never been a boss. I, you know, I've never been in charge of people. Obviously I have children and you're the mom, but, and a wife, but that's a, you know, those are different roles or you're a performer, but to be like the person going, I expect you to <laughs> deliver this to me by Tuesday is an, an odd place to be because I come from the theater, which is a completely collaborative place. You know, I mean, yes, there's the director and probably the producer, but it's so collaborative and, um, to have people like looking at you to make a decision, it's, it's, it can be daunting for me because I, I like to please everybody without <laughs> going too much psychological warfare there, but I do. I want everybody to be happy. Are you happy, Sylvia? I'm happy. I'm talking to you. How could I not be happy? I mean, come on, this is great. Um, so your daughter's a director, I believe you said. Um, how is she, is she part of your production company? Is she? Well, as you, a matter of fact, she just literally sort of stepped aside from it because she wants to do her own thing now. Oh, good for and, her. And I understand that. I mean, she's still a huge consultant. She's a consultant, let's say, right now. And obviously okay. any, neat, any video production stuff we do, she does for us and you know, but I get it. She's 24 years old. She wants to focus on what she's doing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to give her a lot of credit. That's really good. Yeah. Um, so with everything that's going on, I know that you had said, you know, any concerts and so on um, because of the pandemic have been canceled, but you've been doing other things online. Uh, like a, a master class for musical theater auditions. Can you tell me kind of how are you still having the arts survive and thrive and be in front of people? How are you changing some of the things that you're doing to accommodate, you know, the way we have to interact right now? Well, I, a couple weeks ago, obviously, when we all sort of went, oh, this is going to last for a while, um, I just came up with this idea. I, I mean, I, I don't really think of, I guess we're all teachers. We are all teachers. We're all teachers. We're all students. And obviously, I've, ex I've experienced a lot of stuff. I've, I've done a lot of things. I've been around long enough. So I do have things to impart to people. And I know a lot of fantastic people who are very smart. So I went to this man named Michael Orland, who was the, he, he worked on American Idol for 16 seasons. He's brilliant. He was my, uh, he was my pianist for a long time, musical director. And I said, what if we did this sort of musical theater audition masterclass? And, you know, we had about 120 people show up and we went, oh, I guess people will want to do this. Now, obviously it's not thousands of people, but we're not advertising it, let's say. But we have some schools now who want to hear what we have to say. It's, it's been a great, great thing. Although uh, the caveat is that I am the host and anybody who has Zoom understands when you're the host, you're all you're doing is sitting around like pushing buttons and muting people and unmuting people. So I don't know how much in wisdom I'm giving people, but I'm learning how to mute people very well. So oh, there you go. Um, and you're also giving people the opportunity. Yes. And so we've had, you know, 10 people have sung for us and for all these people. We've had Kristen Chenoweth on join us, Mark Shaman, Bryce Pinkham, Sam Gravett, my son, who is currently pause button on 
starring in Wicked on Broadway. Um, um, Faith Prince, Tony Award winner Faith Prince. And then, and then we've, had, um, we've had two stars of Disney come on and join us. So, and it's really, really fun. So, um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna continue to do it. And then I keep trying to do some music and send it out there, but I end up like hating the way I look or something, but <laughs> still working on that. Trying to do some stuff for the Actors Fund as well, because that's a great, great resource for actors and performers right now. We're all sort of in, as millions and millions and millions and probably billions of people are right now, caught in this catch 22 of where we are in terms of how to stay alive, how to, to float, how to feed ourselves right now when there is zero work for us. It's very true. Um, so many of us have, are in that, you know, in that situation, you know, people think that, you know, somebody on Broadway, uh, people, you know, having concerts and whatnot, they must be so flush. And, 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 and thing is that, you know, perception, it's the perception again. It is. And, and it's, and it's that self uh, determination that people must be, you know, again, that word is perception. And it's really a, an awful word, especially in in days like this and in times like this, because we really can't put ourselves in other people's shoes. It, we yeah. have to be in, in ours and then may open our eyes to other things that are going on. Yeah. And, you know, y you're exactly right in, in helping, you know, with the Actors Fund because it is huge. There are millions of people, you know, out and it's an unknown. You know, this new normal is not a new normal yet because we're not there. Right. Um, you know, right. it's, you know, people start calling it new normal, but what is that considering we're still going through this trial and error period? Right, right. And what's coming? What is coming? Well, that's- That'll the, be the new normal. Yes. For a yes. while. I mean, it's so funny. At the, very, at the very beginning of this, I was speaking to somebody. I, I don't even know if I knew this person. And she said, she sort of giggly said to me, well, I've just never been to anything like this. And I literally went, <laughs> nobody has yes. been to anything like this. This is not like, oh, I remember the last time this happened. Uh, do you now? <laughs> Let's say it was it about a thousand years? I mean, yeah. yeah um, they've never been through that before. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's and I different. She was very giggly about it when she said that. And I, it really struck me. But uh, it'll be, it will be a fascinating thing as we look back and what we all learn from it. And I, I, to me, one of the biggest things is that we are connected. Even though we're all like in our little personal places, we are also connected to each other. And that's, I think, a huge lesson for everybody. You know, I, I didn't, know that I was connected to people in Macedonia and, you know, in Madagascar. I mean, I, you don't think of it that way, but we all are really, really connected. Thank you very much. I'm here all week. <laughs> now, could you imagine having, if this had happened 15 years ago, 20 years ago, without the connection that we have now? Right. Um, you know, between the homeschooling and the working from home and, and, and the staying connected, uh, right. which is so important. Right. You know, I think we've learned how to hopefully communicate a little bit better. Right. And well, I think that I, I, I hope that people are understanding that we have to reach out and we have to be, we have to reach out to to those we love and those who love us and we can't hide away in our little in our whatever we have i listen i'm very grateful i have a beautiful home and we're safe and we have food i i of course think about people who are not living as well as i am that that gets to me as well and 
You yeah. do what you, you do what you can. Oh my God, I could just go on and on. That's a, you believe me, so could I. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it just flips me out. Um, oh yeah. Um, but it's, it's a time where, you know, we have to really uh, just go with the flow right now and realize that this is serious and, and, and in taking care of ourselves, taking care, you know, it takes care of others, the social distancing, you know, it's, it's not a joke. And, you know, we're starting to realize that, uh, you know, procrastination isn't the way to go anymore. Although there are still things that I will procrastinate on, um, you know, really, I can't get rid of all my bad habits. It's just not taking place. What fun would I be? I mean, seriously. Exactly. Yeah. I so, think we all, I'm sure everybody, when it began, and I think it sort of began at a different time for everyone, I think we all went, oh, I'm going to do all this reading and I'm going to do this and this. We all had a list of the things we were going to do. And I don't know about you, Sylvia, but I am, I, there are days where like, if I put one piece in the puzzle, like I've had a good day. I just find myself sort of staring a lot. And, um, you know, my family, we're all reading Harry Potter books. I mean, it's two steps forward, one step back, or maybe vice versa. I mean, it's, it's a, it is a fascinating time. Fascinating. It is. It's fascinating. It's um, scary. It's the unknown. Um, but it is fascinating. And it'll be fascinating to see how we, what we've learned from that. And if we can keep some of the good things right. that have come out of it yes. and not, and not get rid of it, you know, um, the, and we'll go back to the communication and the connectivity of people uh, that, Maybe you had a phone call with once every couple of weeks or once a month, and now you know the the connection is much more often right. uh, than it was before, which is not a bad thing. Right. right. So I'd like to see a lot of that kept. You know, some of the learning from this, right. and then whatever whatever our new normal, whenever that is. Yeah. But you keep entertaining. I I, um, so the last time I did a show was March 7th. It was in, um, it was in Florida. It was in Fort Myers, Florida, and it was the symphony show. And the virus had just started rearing its head here. I mean, obviously it's been around, and, but it really, people were starting to go, oh, maybe I should go home or I should and um, the place was full. The audience was packed. And I, at the end of the show, I, I was crying because I went, thank you all for being here. And it's so great that you all came in spite of all the rumors because nobody knew what was going right. on. And I think about, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that we can once again gather together and experience theater and music and dance and celebration together as, as, as groups again, because that's, I mean, first of all, it's what I do, but I also think that, again, just as you were saying, that's what we are all missing, that sense of community. Definitely. So what is your plan? Are you going to learn how to juggle or are you going to put that aside? <laughs> well, Juan Gomez Manzanas, because I'm going back to the beginning with Spanish, I was going to work on my French and I went, you know, maybe I really should learn Spanish for real. Um, I'm, you know, I'm doing a little bit of language. I'm trying to juggle. I'm juggling things. I'm trying to keep my business alive and my friends and family cheered up and and i think the biggest thing oh my god i don't want to cry i think the biggest lesson i have learned is to cut myself a break i think that's what everybody has to do we have to take that list and go 
that would be great. And maybe in different days and different circumstances. And maybe when I'm the busiest I've ever been in my life, I will really learn how to juggle. But right now, part of my list, my new list is to just leave myself alone and, and know that everybody is trying to just make it through and survive and get to the other side of whatever the other side is. Debbie, um, thank you so much. Those are <laughs> wonderful. Uh, what a wonderful way, to, <clears throat> excuse me, what a wonderful way to, to end our conversation. Um, that, that hopefully we'll all be able to do that because that's, that's a goal. Right. It's a really good goal. Right. I, before we leave, I wanted to ask you, uh, where can people find out more about you and your production company or your concerts or what's the best place for them well, to go? If they can visit group5productions.com, which is, it's all lowercase and it's the number five. So group number five productions.com. Uh, they can go to my website, debbiegravit.com. Although I don't know the last time that was sort of updated, but it's there and there are ways to reach me through that. Um, obviously I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I think I'm even on Twitter, but I don't, I'm not a Twitter girl. Uh, I do some Instagram, Debbie S. Gravit. Um, and um, I, you know, I love to talk to people. So people are welcome to reach out to me and we can talk about life or music or girl groups or girl production companies or so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, Debbie, this has been great. Thank you so much. It was really fun. You're so easy to talk to. Not according to my children. Um, <laughs> you can find us on all of your popular podcast platforms. And of course, our website, sylviaandme.com. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned.